Hi everyone and welcome for today's video. As you can see I have already assembled a bunch of materials and the reason why I had a couple of requests showing my mixing and yeah, color thickness for pouring and this is basically the video where I want to show you this in the beginning and then try making another kind of sweet cool pour with this um, yeah, little cup tool that I built a couple of months ago and I just felt like reusing it again. So this is still the very same thing that I built at that point. It's just three plastic cups glued into each other. I didn't care about the sizes, I just wanted to have them fit into each other. So they are not even the same height, so the smallest one is a bit lower than the other ones. But I didn't pay much attention to it and just wanted to see how it works in general. So if you are going to recreate this kind of tool, don't care about the sizes and just pick what you have. Besides that, we're going to use some water. This is a craft acrylic paint, so a very cheap one, but it's a big canister, so it's even cheaper. We're going to use some cups. These are yogurt cups or such. Just use what you have. Some clear cups that you can buy as they are, just to show you a bit better how the paint mixture is. I have my Artina paints. This is the Phthalo Cyanine Blue, the Gold and the White which I most oftentimes use. I have a Deco Art um, Deep Burgundy, just to give you an example on another paint brand, how this is mixed then. I have my acrylic binder that I have been using for the last eternity, <laughs> half a year now or so. I really love this one. And this one is really thick. Not really a prune medium, but I really like using it for this because when dry it already looks like as if it was varnished. So really shiny, glossy, satin, smooth, love this stuff. So if you are upon Europe and have a Bösner store nearby or you can order online from them. And this one is another prune medium which I just recently came across. This is from Flurry Art, which is a Swiss art vendor. This is the entire other end of the spectrum, so this is really thin and liquid. But I want to show you how this works and that you can make the same effect with such a liquid medium. So it doesn't really depend on how thick or thin your medium is, it's just depending how your end result, so your end color mixture is actually mixed. You know what I mean? <laughs> and of course we are going to use some gloves because it's messy. So let's start right off. The pour that I'm going to make in the end is on a 30 by 60 centimeter canvas and therefore I'm going to use this right here as a base layer paint which is great because it's inexpensive and you can just use it perfectly as a base layer paint. I didn't like using this one for a pour because it just looks differently when it dries than these colors. Don't ask me why, it's just as it is. So and I switched to black gloves for the moment, they didn't have any white ones, so I hope you don't mind. So let's start with mixing the background color. And I'm using a larger cup there because I'll need a bit of it. And I just have a scoop in here from Patrick's protein powders, so that I can yeah, stir it a bit and just scoop it off of this bucket. Of course, if you are into squeezy bottles and do have enough of them, you can refill it. I normally use the squeezy bottles that I have from my pouring mediums and reuse them as well because, you know, why wasting them when you can reuse them? Okay, that's the amount of paint that I'm going to use. The rest will be with the pouring medium. So then let's do some more white. This is the Artina white. This one is much thicker and almost empty. And when it comes to the consistency of the paint itself, it is not that relevant. It just depends how much pool medium or water you can use in the end, of course. So if your paint is thinner, you might need less pouring medium to have the consistency that you would like to have. If your paint is pretty thick, as this one is, you can use more of the pool medium, of course, or you use a bit more water. But don't overdo the water because it yeah, loosens the capacity of the paints to stay together, so it loosens their chemical bond. And the more water you use and the lesser paint or binders you have in there, the more likely you are that your paints are going to yeah, crack when they are drying or rip apart 
also going to mix some of the blue and some of the gold. The gold is a bit thinner as you can see. But again it just depends how much of the medium you use in the end. And for the deco art I will add this after I added the pouring medium. As this is even thinner than the other paints are. And I'm going to use my regular acrylic binder for the gold and see what the gold is looking like right of now. It's shiny and gold because when I add a medium it's going to get pastel. Because the medium itself is white, but it dries clear. So this is about it. It's about two thirds of the medium and one third of the paint. Probably it's half half. I really don't measure anything. Same here. Perhaps it's half and half. And adding some of the red here. So that's about it. It's probably two thirds, three quarters. I don't care about the medium and the rest is paint. For the whites I'm going to use this pouring medium just to give you an example. Again this is really liquid so you can hear it. But it works pretty much the same. The difference here is that you probably don't need to add any water. So here are my stirring sticks. They are pretty messy already as I have told in so many videos. I'm reusing them over and over again. So and this is the consistency that I currently have. So this is really too thick. Add a little bit of water here. So it runs perfectly from the stick, domes up for half of a second in the paint and then combines with the rest of the paint. This is usually the yeah, consistency that I have. Sometimes it's a bit thicker, sometimes it's a bit thinner. It really doesn't depend that much on point, but you want to have two paints about all the same, well let's say thickness in the end. Because if your paints have different consistencies, they don't flow evenly on the canvas and they cause different shapes and design than you probably would want to have. So the better you get the mixtures itself on point, the better it gets. So, As mentioned, this is the gold. It looks much more pastel now. And consistency wise, way too thick. So it makes blobs when it gets off the stick. And when the paint runs down, it takes too long time to combine with the rest of the paint. So it needs some water as well. And when you're facing that your paint became too thin, when you added the water, just add a little bit more of the pool medium or the paint, whatever is thicker at this point. And if your paint is still too thick, add a bit more of the water. So this should do about it. And you can see when it runs down the stick, it again runs down in one stream and combines with the paint after half a second. The blue as well, as you can see it's really beautiful blue when it combines with the white of the, of the binder. I really love how this works together. And this also will lighten up the blue very, very much. So this blue will be more like a light blue. Well, a pretty dark light blue, but a much lighter blue than it is in the end. But you just have to know your paints. So when I mix this together, the blue will look completely different than it will look when it's dry. But same here, don't bother and get a consistency that you would need to have. This is still too thick. You can see it doesn't really run down as a solid stream. I hope you can see at least. And it makes blobs when it comes down and doesn't combine as quickly. Better. And at a certain point, if you have mixed so many colors, you can just feel by um, stirring the color if it has the good consistency for your pores. 
So the blue might still be a bit too thick. You just have it in your feeling at some point. So now let's get to the one with the very liquid brew medium and you can see it's just like water. Let's stir this around. And the fun thing is I expected this that I will need way less than I will need in the very end. So I expected this to thin this down like water does, but it doesn't. So it feels like it thickens up the paint even more, which is great so that you can predict or say that the binders are working within the paint. And the pouring medium, of course. And in general, you basically just add more and more until you have the consistency that you are going for. And this is just my mixture, what I like working with. So if you use uh, thicker paint mixtures, then you can use them, of course, the same. You will just get um, nice effects and you get smaller cells if you make silicone in your paints, of course. If you mix your paint thinner, you will get more of fluid flowing look and design and your cells are going to go larger. This is totally up to your taste at the end. So let's see what we can create today. So let's see, before I begin adding the paints to my canvas with the base layer paint, you can, depending on the canvas size that you have and how shaky the canvas is, this is pretty nice, you can hear it. But if it's a bit looser, you can basically retten the backside of your canvas and hair dry it, and you're going to be better on the stability of the canvas, so the fabric is going to tighten a bit more. Other than that, I recommend you putting some pinboard pins underneath, such as I did here, just to keep the canvas elevated from the surface. And other than that, we are good to go. We are going to add the gold into the middle ring. So this is all that is left. If you have some left amount paint in your cup, that is pretty good in case you need to correct some things in the end. So if we have a bit of paint left, it's always a good thing. So we're going to add some of the white in the middle. And we're going to add the red and the blue in the outer ring. So I'm starting with the blue bottom layer. I'm adding some red on top of it and adding some blue on top of it again. So I hope it gives some cool interlacing layering color shift effect in the end. Blue and red works great together because it makes it violet and with the white and gold it works in each of these colors. So let's hope this looks cool in the end. I have never done this in this kind of map before. I have spread it evenly around the entire ring. If you want to go fancy and add perhaps the red on one side and pour the blue on the other side to make them half half, might look cool in the end as well. Never tried that, <laughs> I might in the future. But if you try this, let me know how this one works out. Okay. Now, as this is done, we can care for the base layer paint. Just adding some of it. And I normally use a pellet knife just to spread it around. I still have some resin on here. I could remove it, but it's even, so I just leave it as is. So as you can see, pretty even, so it's great. And for this technique, I basically always try to yeah, put one side higher. I'm going to use this side here and I hope you can see everything great. Just a bit, doesn't need too much. And then the fun can begin. <laughs>
Okay, I normally don't talk when I pour. Um, the red itself, you might not be able to see it, perhaps a bit shade-wise, um, isn't showing that much at all. So we will see how this is going to end up. If it will show a bit better than it does now. If not, perhaps a two-sided version would work. And then I just yeah, tilt everything and hope for a nice design. And I can see I do have this little bump of color here. Perhaps the paint that was not mixed properly or dried already. So I'm going to remove this right now because otherwise you get these awkward shapes in the end. Like these swirls which I have here already. A bit of the red is coming through now when I have tilted it more so and stretched it, which is great. But I need to stretch the paints even more just to get this feather look. And I need to try to get rid of the swirl in the middle. I don't really like this one so much. So this time I didn't do too much of the paint itself. So it takes a bit longer until everything has moved from side to side. Which is okay, the drip of paint that we are having here I can re scratch up and put in my good old jar. <laughs> I finally have a name for it. Thanks for the suggestions. And bring this down there as well. It perhaps doesn't need to have the entire way down because the white actually works pretty good with the design. Just a bit just a bit more to help it look more as one piece. And two more steps in the end of the pour. I usually take my torch and torch over it. There is no silicone in there, so it will not have any effect though, except for popping the air bubbles. And why would you want to make this? If you don't and your paints dry as they are and these air bubbles are still in the paint, you end up having small little craters of paint when this is dry. When you pop the air bubbles as long as everything is still wet, you won't get this effect because the paint just moves together. But of course the risk that you're having when you pop the bubbles is that you have teeny tiny dots of color from underneath showing through your top layer, which I have here little bumps of small white dots, which might look cool in the end because this overall looks like a space related pour as well, perhaps a comet or something or wormhole slipstream enterprise going to warp and flying a curve, which she would never do, because never fly curves during war. Um, anyways, so this is pretty much what I like. And the last step that I'm regularly doing is using a palette knife ta -da, and moving around the edges so that the drip of paint doesn't stay on the canvas and is removed. It will just give you a cleaner result in the end. And in case you're wondering what I'm doing with this cup right now, as there is paint inside, pretty much nothing. I will just turn it upside down, let the paint flow out and let it dry as is. The good thing that the paint that is now in there even glues everything together even better. Of course, over time, after a couple of pours, your cups are getting thinner and thinner and hold less paint, of course, but if there is a point that I can only do mini pours with it because it's not holding enough paint, I can just make a new one. So yeah, I let this try. I will show the end result of course as usual and I hope you liked this demonstration so far, like the paint mixing. And if you have any questions as usual, of course, let me know in the comments. And I will be happy to help as much as I can. So I guess I will see you tomorrow when this one is dried. See you then. 
Wow, you made it this far? How oh, great! This video for sure was a bit more instructional than my usual videos are, but you asked for it. <laughs> so I still hope you had some fun watching and got something new out of it. I hope all the questions that you had concerning my paint mixture are probably answered now. If not, of course, as usual, ask me in the comment section down below. Hit the subscribe button if you have not subscribed to my channel so far and also the bell icon to get notified when I upload new videos. Social media links are down below besides the materials that I've used. And as you can see, as mentioned earlier in the beginning of the video, this blue really, really dried. Super dark, I love this blue so much and the overall look is still really, really cool. It still reminds me on a comet or something on warp. <laughs> so thank you so much for having joined me for this video, thank you for watching and other than that, I hope to see you in my next videos. Have a great day, bye bye!